hard to imagine a better way for the Olympic City to put its best foot forward. A sparkle presides one year out, and there is an electrically charged story to tell at the skating rink in Vancouver as the games draw near. The Europeans are all watching the new world now, at least when it comes to this sport. The Four Continents Figure Skating Championships on CBC. First medals tonight, pairs free. Canadian stars Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison are hot on someone's heels. They are just a point back of the former world champions, Hang and Tong of China. Welcome, Welcome. to the ice, the way we look at it anyway. Championship figure skating on CBC. Scott Russell along with Tracy Wilson and Kurt Browning. You know, Canada's got such great lineage in pairs figure skating under Hill and Martini. Brasseur and Eisler, and of course, Sally and Peltier. And I'm wondering, Tracy, if Dubé Davison can be inheritors of that legacy. Well, they definitely have the potential. And I think we saw an indication of that at the World Championships last year when they won the bronze medal. But let's face it, they have not had a great season this year. Uh, but they did deliver here in the short program. And they need to go out and lay down another performance, back-to-back -back strong performances here, to really show the rest of the world that they can be contenders. They want to, I think, at least stay ahead of one Chinese team and challenge uh, Pang and Tong, who are in first place, to really show the world that they're capable to be contenders at the World Championships. All right, Kurt. Well, the Chinese have been great recently in pairs figure skating. You think of Shen and Zhao, the world champion, Zhang and Zhang, who are here, and Pang and Tong, who lead. It's a great mix for the Chinese. I think it's a great mix of what a, what a great legend, uh, legendary group of skaters that they're putting on the table at the same time. And the story within China, their nationals is going to be very interesting. Which of these two teams is going to push out to the front? And I know we like to talk about the Canadians and how we mingle with each other and how we mix into the international market. But what is going to happen between these two Chinese teams? It's a good story to watch. All right, so the Canadians fit into the mix. Dubé and Davison and maybe another pair who are set to make a breakthrough. With more on that, here's Brenda Irving. Well, Megan DeHamel and Craig Button are the reigning Canadian silver medalists, and they had a wonderful short program the other day. Uh, they set a new personal best score in the short, currently sit in fourth place, and that is a great position for them as they head into their free skate. We really are the little pair team that could. You know, we, we came out in the short, and we got another personal best, and, you know, more people standing and more people feeling the, the passion and the emotion in our skating. And I think for us, it's, it's a big step. And now we're lumped in with, you know, some of the top three, four teams in the world, literally. And to be, you know, after a year and a half, to be there and to step into a free skate, knowing that we can compete with those teams in the long as well, we're, we're really excited. And this is a team that finished sixth at last year's World Championships. And they did that in their first season together and with Craig suffering from a pretty serious shoulder injury. So here at Four Continents, this is their ninth competition together. And boy, Scott, can you imagine how good they might be once they get some real mileage behind them? Right, Brenda. And here are the standings after the short program. The Chinese flank the Canadian pair. Pang and Tong lead. Dubé Davison of Canada are close. Then it's Zhang and Zhang. Duhamel and Bunton stand in fourth place within sight of the podium. One wonders how much Milan Brodeur and John Matadal are feeling the moment. This is a big chance for them to make an impression, to put themselves in a position where they could go to the World Championships in Los Angeles to represent Canada and begin dreaming about an Olympic appearance. This is a charming program, skating to Gone with the Wind. Wonderful speed as they go into their opening overhead left and look at how the speed flows right across from end to end.
both have trouble on that jump. They go clean here, throw triple loop, and she was leaning right on the takeoff, out of sync. They were third at the Canadian Nationals in Saskatoon, but their spot at the World Championships is still pending. Skate Canada, who will make the decision, are still watching the progress of Annabelle Langlois and Cody Hay, last year's champions, who have not competed yet this year because of an injury to Annabelle. lights up. They really play off each other in this footwork sequence as opposed to just kind of going through the technical motions. of this team. It's as though they have skated with nothing to lose until they got to this free skate at this competition. And you can see, Scott, they were carrying in the expectations, the, the notion that if they skated well here, it would be their spot on the world team. They will still now have to wait. Hard press to force a smile. Milan Broder and... So, where there was once a very confident season for Brodeur and Matt at all, there is now some doubt. They came into this sixth after the short program, but close. 47-69 for the technical elements, 48 even for the program with the deduction, 94-69 the free skate, 149-85 leads them in first place, but still the top pairs are to come. Representing the United States, Kiana McLaughlin and Robbie 
Brubaker. Back-to-back -back American championships for Kiana McLaughlin and Rockney Brubaker. She's a Californian. He's from St. Louis, and they train in Colorado. They were also the world junior champions in 2007. So whenever they compete internationally, they tend to hit it. Hang on to your hats with these two. Boy, do they go at it. Look at the speed. Skating to West Side Story. Watch the height and snap of the twist. She does not use her hands at all on the landing. All those little things, bullet points that add to points. The element they struggle most with, side-by-side -side triple jumps. First crack at it with triple sound singled her second jump. They both got the triple out there on competition ice. They did struggle somewhat in the short pro program, came in seventh after that. Showing his strength and ability to skate crossovers with his partner over his head. Another bullet point, these guys have a lot of potential. A side by side triples, this time triple toe. Very quick release on her on her check on her landing. She's crisp. and the theme of this program alive in the footwork choreography, quite intricate.
Yana McLaughlin and Rockney Brubaker of the United States, kind of like racehorses who come bursting out of the gate. Exactly. <laughs> and watch out if they ever hit their stride fully. The American national champion center stage in Vancouver. This is for Now the judgment for the American champions. 109.85 with a deduction of one. She fell. 164.01 their total, which pushes them into first place at four continents. Our next competitors representing Canada. Talk about putting on an early charge in their togetherness. Megan Duhamel and Craig Bunton, their second senior season together at their first world championships. They were sixth in Sweden and they made inroads for Canadian pairs at the upcoming world championships and on into the Olympic Games. <laughs> Skating to Tosca, choreographed by Julie Marcotte. Three and a half points separate first and fourth. Opening here with a series of side-by-side -side triple jumps. What a fighter she is, hanging on to the landing of the second there. Chinese Zhang and Zhang, who are third. attempting triple twists. They go for the double and the quality of execution. Moving towards the next element. Throw triple loop. Megan was very loose in the air. She's characteristically very strong and tight in the air. Great air position, we call it. That one was open. going into a spread eagle. The entrance to that lift. Because of his shoulder injury, he finds changing positions in the air a little bit painful. So to get the higher levels, he's added the difficult entries to the lifts. But The 
there comes a point in the program when you're watching, you feel your toes start to curl a little bit, and you're, help, you're, you're trying to find a way to help them along, and I think that's what's happening. They don't have the momentum and the speed that they usually have. It's like they're having to work for any everything in this performance. It's just not coming easily to them. Silver medalists at the national championships in Saskatoon. Michel Gauthier, Manon Perron, their coaches. They had the lead after the short program in Saskatoon. And perhaps this was an opportunity missed in Vancouver. The runners up at the Canadian Championships do Hamilton. The score for the marks now for Megan DeHamel and Craig Bunton. She's from Lively, Ontario. He's from Kelowna, British Columbia. 54-71 technical, 52-64 program. The deduction, Megan fell. And their grand total now, 168-43, although it puts them in first place. They'll be hard-pressed to get to where they want to be, which is on the podium at Four Continents. Pacific Coliseum, once the home of the Vancouver Canucks, it will be the home of short track speed skating and figure skating at the Olympic Games. Don't forget the World Championships on CBC. Late March, we'll have all the action on the CBC Television Network, as well as on digital bowl and live streamed on cbcsports.ca from Hollywood. Canadian champions Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison world championship bronze medalists in Sweden so much potential and trying to affirm that they are at the very top of this discipline. <laughs> this program to the music Carmen choreographed by David Wilson.
When they are on their game, these two Canadians can aspire to be the best in the world. And that's all anyone, including their coaches, David Peltier and Annie Barabe, can ask. Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison give themselves a chance to win in Vancouver. Welcome back, post-competition celebration, David Peltier, along with Jessica Dubé, Bryce Davison, over with Annie Barabe, who's their longtime coach, an extremely supportive woman. The Chinese teams have the big twist, and they have the big throws, but this team has the magic to create a moment on the ice. This twist, not as big as the Chinese team, but is it improving, and that is awesome. Every time they stick it out there in competition, it gets better. I thought they came out and did exactly what they had to do. They skated an exquisitely clean performance. A series of double axles at the beginning. Here's their side-by-side -side triple sal cows. Thought the character was very strong throughout this dance and they have definitely now put the pressure on the Chinese teams to skate clean. Watch this throw triple loop. Look at the distance she covers. Again, they don't quite have the height that the Chinese have, but the lifts, I think, second to none, Kurt. I love how solid his upper body is, and, and it's so tempting to always watch her up there and the beautiful positions she's putting up uh, above him, but I sometimes look at his chest and his shoulders. They're so steady and calm, it's, and it's really a sign of control. And if you look at his feet, he floats across the ice. A lot of the other teams slow down. That's what makes them, in my opinion, the best lifters in the world. They were second after the short program, just over a point behind Pang and Tong, the Chinese leaders. 121.26 for the free skate for Dubé Davison. 185.62 vaults them right into the lead. And that's by far their best score internationally this season. World Championship bronze medalists Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison of Canada have now set the bar at four conference right. in Vancouver. As you take a look at the standings as they play out right now, Duhamel Bunton of Canada are in second spot behind their teammates. Now the Chinese contingent, Dan Zhang and Hao Zhang, who won a silver medal at the Olympic Games in Torino. I'll never forget watching their performance in Pragelato from the Nordic venue when she crashed into the boards and miraculously, after a delay, got up and secured the medal. They will need a personal best score to overtake Dubé and Davison. And they will open here with first double axles and then into triple 
toes, and she doubled. In pair skating, when one doubles, the other also gets credit for only a double. Such a big delay. She takes her time before starting the revolutions of the jump. for them, their triple twist. Look at the height. Zhang Zhang River, choreographed by Marina Zueva. Resisting the urge to put down that other foot. Side by side triples coming here. And she singled it. And you could see that she was in trouble 25 or 30 feet before she even left the ice. She looked stuck, frozen in her position. And there's the toe picks that you talk about that are absent. Bryce does his lifting and... Coming undone here, he yes. got too slow, didn't have the flow across the ice, so he couldn't get a clean put down of that lift. They've been second so many times, second at the Olympics, second at the 08 World Championships, second at the Grand Prix Final this season in Korea to their teammates, Pang and Tong. They did not come to the practice this morning. She was complaining of some uh, back pain, not feeling well, and you can see not a lot of energy in this program. Now, this is definitely not what you would expect. But sometimes there's one competition throughout a season that seems to change the rules of how you expect things to follow course, and this could be the one for the Canadians breaking through. And it's also the nature of pair skating. These programs so demanding. Once you start getting a little tight and making mistakes, it just seems to snowball. <laughs> 23-year-old Dan Zhang, 24-year-old Hao Zhang, out of China's and north in Harbin. They were third after the short program. We'll return to Vancouver in a moment. One hundred and eleven point seven eight. One hundred and eleven point seven eight free skate score for Zhang and Zhang. The total. We'll leave them behind the Canadians. 174, 98. Still to come are their teammates, Pang and Tong. Okay. 
It's like the reality setting in. Our next Heavy disappointment in the Chinese corner. A look at the standings before the final pair. Two Canadians in the top three, Dubé Davison, Duhamel, and Bunton. Zhang and Zhang of China, currently second. The only pair that can change this. Once the world champions, Xing Pang and Jian Tong. And they will skate to a selection of tangos, and this was choreographed by Sarah Kawahara, who was famous for choreographing for Scott Hamilton. Dancer before he became a pair skater. Taking advantage of that fact here in the footwork sequence. mind as I was watching that straight line step this program is choreographed so far top to bottom and they're keeping up with the choreography they're looking for a, an unprecedented fourth four continents victory left some of their big tricks to after the halfway mark in the program because extra 10% deemed to be more difficult, of course, later in the program. Right on the music, perfectly timed. Right into the throw, triple sow cow. Zinc, that it was perfect. She'll switch to the other foot, using the outside edge this time to do a perfect throw, triple loop. Ticking them off.
Hang and Tong of China, their lead over Dube Davison of Canada after the short program was slim. A point and a fraction. However, they have just conducted a marvelous free skate at the Pacific Coliseum. And the crowd knows it. What an improvement for these two in so many areas. Of course, their throws and their twists have always been strong, but I think it was the way that they handled this choreography, Kurt, and you said it was choreographed top to bottom, quite a sophisticated level, much more sophisticated than what they've done in the past. Well, I, I think there's kind of a private joke among the skating that I'll make not private anymore about Sarah Kawahara. Her choreography is hard. Yes. It's really always challenging, and she demands the best out of these skaters, and I think that the most improved award in the pairs event uh, over the last few years definitely should go to this team. And, and you think there's a spot, there's a way we could beat them, and it would be the second mark. And then they start taking that away from you, too. And then on top of that, they left a whole bunch of their elements getting an extra 10%. Look at how he catches her in the air and then places her down on the ice. A wonderful speed. And here you can see the speed going into and out of the throw. Perfect timing. And you could see gaining the speed on the landing. What a rush. Artistic impression on the landing of a throw. Just showing control all the way through. And I think it's about, it's about the vehicle that, that they chose. I think that he has often been left behind. She's been improving, but I feel like he was kind of stuck in the mud a little bit and, you know, and slowing down the team as far as growing. This program gave him a character that he seemed to grab onto. And you really felt that there was a sense that one thing was not more important than something else to them, which hasn't been true in the past. It used to be the big tricks. They love to do it, and the rest is, yeah, we'll do it because we have to. Not really interested in it. It's like they took full weight and respect for everything, the footwork, the connecting steps. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a team that is going to be tough to beat at the World Championships. The defending World Champions from Germany are going to have their hands full with with them and they have a great pedigree also a great nose for the podium they won the world <laughs> championship yes. in 2006 they're the grand prix this final the champions world. this year they beat the reigning world champions Sevchenko oh, and sokovi to do that so pang and tong of china know where it's at in order to get to where they want to be, which is right on top. 129.34, they far exceed what they need. They needed just over 120, 194.94. And so there are your champions yet again at four continents for the fourth time, Peng and Tong of China. Here's Brenda. Well, Jessica DeBay and Bryce Davison, they are their own worst critics. They truly are perfectionists, but I bet the two of you would have a uh, hard-pressed time to find something wrong with that free skate today. Well, there were uh, like a couple rough spots. I mean, we hit the board, and then, uh, like, thankfully we put it behind, and then the rest was good, but there's still room for improvement, so we're just keep uh, we're just going to keep working on it uh, for Worlds. Well, if you want to be on the podium at World Championships, you kind of knew heading into this that you had to beat uh, one of the Chinese teams. You did that here. I'm sure that's something that, that wasn't lost on you. Yeah, um, we, we had to come in and set ourselves up, uh, showing uh, all the judges and all the world that we were contenders, and uh, I think we did that pretty well here. We're happy with how we skated, and. Uh, Happy to get a really good short out yesterday and a good performance today. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go back to Scott now. Thank you, Brenda. And here are the final results. A season that has been characterized by fits and starts by Dubé Davison of Canada. Today, they nailed it. Wound up second to a great skate by Pang and Tong of China. Zhang and Zhang, the second Chinese pair, wound up with the bronze medal to Hamill and Bunton for Canada. We're fourth. Shades of future glory, Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison ascend the podium in the Olympic City, flanked by the Chinese. We'll see you next time from Vancouver, British Columbia.